Michael, welcome to Waterstones. It's great to have you here to talk about your memoir, Kill the Black One First. It's a very provocative title and we'll come back to that a bit later, but I actually wanted to start with the woman that this book is dedicated to, Margaret Hurst. Um, she's an incredible woman, clearly, from reading your book, and she was the woman who looked after you whilst you were growing up in care. I wonder if you could tell me, first of all, what were the main lessons or things that you learned from her? Worth mentioning that Margaret Hurst was a house mother, so she, she looked after me. She, she was white, and she was an amazing woman. And I suppose she taught me um, a, a number of things, which, which I've then used in bringing up children myself very successfully. And she set very clear boundaries in terms of what I could do, you know, and what I, I shouldn't do. Um, she was very much into Christian values of um, mustn't lie, cheat or, or steal. And if I did something wrong, there would always be consequences. I wouldn't get away with it. So that, that affected sort of how I was, how I treated other children, and she was very concerned about fair treatment of, of others. She also was the person who sort of instigated this idea about how to respond to perceived moments of racism. Yes. Could you tell us a bit more about why that was so important? Well, in the book, I describe lots of instances of racism. And the, the one thing I know is the, the, the natural thing and the instinctive thing is to react emotionally as soon as you hear something that's offensive. And some of the, some of the police officers I met were unashamedly racist. And so what I would do, having been taught by Margaret, was stop, think about what's been said, process it, and then decide how to react. So I've, I've regularly seen road rage in the streets where people don't do that. They yeah. do the opposite. They, 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 they react and then often regret what they've said or what they do. Uh, I, I was taught very much the opposite. You know, just, just to stop, keep calm, think about what has happened, what has gone on, and then decide how best to react. Mm -hmm. And that, that has been a, a, a great reaction. And it's often meant that I've taken things up through official channels and issues have been dealt with, whatever they were. Uh, they might have been children at school, they might have been other police officers. And generally, that I've, I've had a happy outcome, mm. that I've been happy with, and a just outcome. I think the other thing is that um, I found it very difficult when members of the black community um, called me a traitor, a coconut, shouted insults, because that, that was far more hurtful than any other racist insults. And, you know, not all police officers were racist. You know, I would not got, have got promoted and reached the top of the police service if that had been the case. Mm. You know, silly, but there were one or two individuals who were unashamedly racist, and that was condoned by other people who may not have been like-minded, like but, you know, their, their behaviour was, was condoned or nobody did anything about it. Mm. So the thing that hurt the most uh, was, was my own... Members of my, what I saw as my own community... And they didn't see me in the same light. But members of the black community in particular calling me and shouting the, about the fact that I was a traitor. And, you know, clearly there, there was certainly no acceptance from certain members of the black community. Do you think we've made a lot of progress since you were in the police force or do we still have a long way to go? I think we have. I mean, certainly at the start of the book... Um, clearly there was tremendous hatred towards the police. There, there were lots of sins that I was bearing the brunt of. When, when I got off that uh, bus and walked into that riot, I, I, I was targeted, I was singled out, uh, and I had a petrol bomb thrown at me. I didn't realise it was a petrol bomb. There, you know, there, was, there was very much the, the sound of breaking glass. Um, and and uh, uh, somebody had shouted, kill the black one first. Um, I, I, uh, there was this strange sort of laughter which I've described as guttural mm. um, and I thought well maybe he's just joking and then the next thing is I smelt petrol vapour and then flames just shot up in front of me and the officer who was beside me and you know if we hadn't had shields we, we would have been on fire mm. um, so it's quite obvious that I was bearing the brunt of years of hatred and antagonism between the police and, and the black community and I, I couldn't understand it. I mean, I'd never been in a riot like that. I've never been trained to deal with petrol bombs. And I thought, well, here I am, this nice guy. I'm here to help people. And why, why are they being so horrible to me? Yeah. And I felt very naive and very green. And, you know, I had to reflect very hard on whether I wanted to continue doing that job. I want to go back to 
to your sort of childhood in a way because you seem to have this incredibly innate sense of justice and I wondered where it came from and, and there is this recurring image in the book of of a figure in a window because you saw a, a burglary being committed in, in the home in which you were being brought up and I wondered whether that was where that sense of justice came from or is it again does it come directly from Margaret and that idea of there being consequences for for you know misbehaving? I think both so um well, about the age of eight years old, uh, the children's home I was in, so we all moved. So the good thing is I wasn't moved around. There was continuity of care. Mm. And Margaret was a constant figure in my very early life from the age of 18 months right through to 16 year old, years old, where sadly at 16, uh, she, she, she died. Margaret died of um, ovarian cancer. But she taught me the sense of justice. So the figure that um, you refer to it, it, that I saw in the window as he was leaving um, the window was, was uh, a young boy, a lot older than me. I was eight years old. He was probably 17, 18. And he, he was climbing out of the window. And he'd broken into the children's home, um, stole some money and valuables. And uh, it was very shocking, called the police and it was a local beat bobby who I knew who came round. Um, I remark about the fact that our dog didn't bark and I was very disappointed. The following morning when I took the dog for a walk, I saw somebody, and certainly the back of the head, of a figure that looked very familiar. And um, I, I thought, well, that, 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 that must be him. Anyway, I, excitedly, I, I ran to the local Bobby's house, which was about a mile, mile and a half away, which for me, you know, who enjoyed running, was, was no big deal. And the Bobby came back and he was, he was very quick to, to, to get ready. We went back to the park and the police officer spoke to this, this boy who, um, as, it, as it happened, he had our valuables on him and, and the money and the cash that he'd stolen and admitted that he had burgled our place the night before. And I saw him and he was quite a sad figure mm. and not how I'd imagine. I mean, you do fantasise as to what a burglar is like. <laughs> But when, when I actually saw this figure, it was far less frightening. Mm. Um, and and there, there wasn't the anonymity that there would normally be. I knew who'd broken into our house. And more important was that great feeling of satisfaction I got of getting our property back, getting the money back, and the fact that this, this individual hadn't got away with it. Mm. And maybe he would have been helped. He obviously had some problems or was homeless temporarily. Mm. But, but, but either way, it was a just outcome. Anybody who makes their first arrest at the age of eight is obviously destined for great things. <laughs> I mean, the book is filled with not only sort of amazing achievements that you've had in your life, but also very moving details. And I think mm. Margaret is the kind of emotional anchor of that book. She's clearly an extraordinary woman, had such a yeah. positive outcome on your life. Definitely. Um, yeah. So it seems very fitting that the book is dedicated to her. But Michael, it's just brilliant to talk to you about, about this memoir. Thank you so much. Great. Pleasure.